Hey guys, I'm Aaron. In this video series, uh, we're building a robotic bartender that makes his drinks for you. It'll be a circular platform that spins around and hopefully we'll be able to make multiple drinks at one time uh, very quickly. And in the last part, we worked on building the basic structure uh, so that we have a place to mount all of our components. And this episode, we are going to uh, work on staining it so it looks a bit nicer than it did uh, last episode. We're also going to test out the pressure system so we'll be stepping through a little bit of code for that. And then we're going to uh, model and 3D print a few more parts so that we can mount those pumps. And also, uh, we're going to spend the last part of the episode putting all the components together uh, and mounting those actuators that um, control our uh, spirit dispensers. So, let's get started. Okay, so I have these feet, and the next thing I'm gonna do is just drill some holes in the bottom of that platform. And then since I have four of these feet, uh, I'm just gonna mount them equal distance apart, slightly offset from the edge. Last thing I'm going to do now that it's flipped over is put a coat of stain and polyurethane on it so that it looks real nice. So I got some parts set up here, and these are what are going to make our uh, mixer system work. So they will give us the ability to uh, output more liquid for all of the mixers. Uh, so like, for instance, if you make a rum and coke, obviously there's going to be more coke to rum unless you're making some really strong drinks. Uh, so as you remember from last time, we have the self-priming pumps, and what self-priming pumps are are pumps that you don't have to submerge in water you can start them off dry and then um, you know they could be above the water basically. So say I have my water down here, a cup of water, I can pump up to this pump and then out even higher. Uh, and these are good because we don't want to submerge these in our mixer bottles. Uh, I also got some other components. So we had these from last time, these are vinyl tubes. I also have these flow meters. So what these are supposed to do uh, they're basically supposed to uh, take in volume, measure the amount of volume that's passed through here, and then we can use that reading to shut off these pumps. So uh, these are Hall effect sensors, and if you don't know what Hall effect sensors are, uh, they basically output a series of pulses, and you count the number of pulses, and by knowing how many pulses 
uh, per time interval, you can determine the amount of flow that has gone through this. So I have some wires here, and uh, there's a black wire, a yellow wire, and a red wire. The black is uh, hooked up to ground, uh, red wire is hooked up anywhere from 5 volts to 24 volts, and then your yellow wire is where you receive the pulses. So I have my Arduino here, and there are several uh, digital I.O. pins, and I can hook up this yellow pin to one of these digital I.O. pins and write a program that basically listens for all of these pulses through an interrupt, and then uh, through that we can figure out how much volume has been output. So the other thing I have is this, and obviously this is a much bigger opening than what we have for our tube here, um, and you can't really fit this in here, and even if you could shove this inside, it's not gonna be watertight. So what I have instead is one of these, and this is a adapter, so it goes on here, and I couldn't find one that was the exact match for this pipe, so it's a little loose. Um, it kind of comes right off pretty easily. But what I do have is this hose adapter clamp, and you can put this on and tighten this up so that um, no extra fluid can leak through the gaps in this thing. So I'm gonna set up a small experiment and then uh, write some code for my Arduino so that we can test the accuracy of this flow meter and then potentially hook this up. Alright, so I'm soldering wires now, and I just want to put these connectors on the end so that we have a way to easily connect to the Arduino. And if you've never, never soldered before, there's a pretty nice trick that you can do to get some good uh, solder points. Um, and how you do that is you just want to basically uh, get some solder on your uh, soldering iron. And once you have that, uh, basically just kind of wet the, the end of this uh, um, wire, just so it's kind of shiny. And you can kind of see the, the solder flow onto the wire. So when it gets really shiny like that, you have a nicely uh, soldered wire end. And then in order to connect to another wire, uh, you want to do the same thing on this end. So get both ends um, soldered up. And then you can basically just touch the wires together and uh, they'll create a connection and as long as the solder just flows between the two wires uh, It'll create a nice connection. Okay, so I have some code here that's going to help us measure the flow through that flow meter. And just a disclaimer, I didn't write this code. I uh, picked it up from online. And uh, this, so this is the Adafruit product page. I bought this uh, flow meter on Adafruit. And if you just scroll down here, there's a link that takes you to GitHub where this block of code is. Uh, you can download it. They have a some extra features in here that I took out. So um, you can, uh, they had a liquid crystal display module that they um, printed the flow rate on, uh, but I just deleted that code just to make it a bit more simple. Um, but what this does is basically um, sets up an interrupt. So this is an interrupt function here that um, 
triggers every uh, millisecond. So what an interrupt is, is something that uh, you can configure and basically when uh, something happens, it will call this function and it's not part of your main loop. If you're familiar with Arduino, there's a main loop. Um, it just gets called on its own. So uh, it's pretty nice because uh, it's not dependent on your logic. So what happens here is I configure uh, flow sensor pin as two. So on the digital IO pins, uh, the signal input, so that, that blocked signal, the yellow wire will be pin two. And then in this interrupt, what happens is when there's a low to high transition, it counts one, so it adds to a pulse. And when it adds a, a pulse to this variable, uh, pulses, then we can check that variable in the loop. And there's a simple conversion here. So it's uh, pulses divided by uh, 7.5 times 60, which gives you the amount of flow in liters. So that's what it's doing here in the main loop and then it's just printing to serial out. And so if I run this, uh, what happens first is it just sets up the serial stuff and then configures that flow sensor pin uh, and then sets up the interrupt. And uh, I'll just load this on my Arduino, which I have hooked up to my computer right now. And uh, I have the serial monitor. And so when this runs, we can see um, this text being output, which tells us how many liters have passed through the flow meter. So I'm going to set up my experiment and see how accurate our flow meter is. All right, so I have my experiment set up here. And uh, on my Arduino, I have the code that I just showed you earlier. And my flow meter is hooked up to power and ground. Uh, so it's just powered through the Arduino. And then the uh, pulse output is uh, on this digital IO 2 pin um, and then so this uh, flow uh, or th this uh, pump here is hooked up to my power supply and then I have a water jug and a bowl and so I'm pumping water out of this water jug and into that bowl and this thing has about a liter of water in it so I'm gonna run this pump and then see what my Arduino program uh, outputs and uh, compare that against what I actually put in this thing. Uh, so let me turn this on and we'll see what happens. So it looks like we output about three-fourths of a liter of water. And uh, so over here on my monitor, uh, see if you can see this. Okay, so over here on the monitor, there's about uh, 0.73 liters uh, that came out. So that's about right. And uh, I think this will be accurate enough for what we're trying to do. Um, so I think this will be our setup. And now we just have to make sure that we can read values from all, um, all five of those uh, uh, flow meters. All right, so we just got a new CAD software called uh, Creole Parametric from PTC. And uh, this is different than 123D design because this is parametric modeling. So if, uh, for example, I pull up uh, this flow meter that I modeled here, um, on the left-hand side, there's a tree here, and you can basically see all the steps that I took uh, to make this model and if I wanted to go back into any of these steps say I want to edit this pattern up here um, then I can just go back into this tree um, edit one of my parameters like this angle I'll change it to 60 degrees um, six, zero. and then uh, that will update and then all of these other features um, which were children of this feature also updated with one two 3D design on the other hand, I just had a bunch of primitive shapes that I mashed together to make this shape here. And uh, But now this is just one big block and I can't really go back and edit things uh, the way I can with parametric modeling. Um, so anyway, I uh, put uh, five two liter bottles inside our bucket and it looks like that the spacing is pretty tight in here. We can't really fit too much inside here. 
um, but there seems to be just enough room to fit our small pump uh, which is this guy here and then a flow meter here and uh, if we can maybe squeeze those bottles towards the center or maybe even go with smaller bottles we'll definitely have enough room uh, but for now this is going to be the configuration that we're going to try all right so i just modeled this uh, pump bracket and this is going to mount right on the inside in between those uh, two liter bottles inside the bucket and the idea with this is that uh, there's not going to be any attachments we're going to use these two holes to screw it into the wall and then we're just going to drop this pump uh, right in so just slide in like that and uh, it'll rest on this surface uh, on this uh, larger diameter uh, that white section there um, so if we look at it inside the model here you can see it's still a pretty uh, tight squeeze right there um, but hopefully this bracket here is has a small enough profile that uh, will still give us plenty of room to work with and we're going to put that flow meter on top of there so we're going to let this print overnight and uh, see if we can put it in there tomorrow morning all right so Aaron just got done finishing this thing uh, he also painted the bottom black and now we also have some 3D printed parts printed. These are the brackets for the actuators, and we also got some arms for the nozzles. So we're gonna start putting this thing in. Here. All right, so our bartenders are starting to look pretty good now. Uh, things are starting to come together really well. Uh, this bracket just uh, finished printing from the printer and uh, this looks pretty good too. The pump drops in real nicely, just like that. Uh, so anyway, we have more parts coming in the mail, more electronics, uh, pumps and flow meters and things like that. Uh, so for the next video, we'll probably be working on mostly electronics. Uh, if you guys uh, are interested, and keeping up to date with our videos, uh, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, and uh, until then, we'll see you next time.